Hello everyone, welcome to video 11 of chapter 5. In this video we'll cover chapter 5.7. We'll talk about what happens if we add a, an additional constraint. Okay, so let's get started. So let's say I have an original LP problem and I have found the optimal solution. I call it capital X star. The question is, what happens if a new constraint is added? Well, that depends. So, okay, so we want to point out that here, the only change we made is adding a new constraint. The objective function remains unchanged, okay? So two situations can happen. First, the optimal solution x star satisfies the new constraint that you add. Then x star is the optimal because we did not change the optimal objective function and the optimal value is also unchanged. So that's the easy case. Then there's nothing to do. You just verify that and then you conclude nothing changes. Otherwise, if the optimal solution x star does not satisfy the new constraint, then you have to compute a new optimal solution. And uh, the key um, algorithm one could use there is the dual simplex algorithm. Okay, let's look at examples. Okay, we will take um, the example 5.7.1 from the textbook. Okay, so we want to minimize negative z with uh, this. So these two are constraints, and that's the objective function. Okay. So you see that the constraint is already in canonical form, and um, x2, x4 are the two basic variables. And the basic solution is feasible here. Um, it's already optimality criterion is met. Okay, so then uh, we can conclude that um, the minimum of negative z, that is the maximum of z, is 106, is attained at this optimal solution, which is um, x2 is 4, x4 is 6, and the others are 0, as written here. Okay, so part 1 of the example. Now we add a new constraint. Let's say... We have another constraint that looks like this. What shall we do? Well, first step, we need to verify if uh, the optimal solution satisfies the constraint, so which we called C here. Okay, so let's put it in x1, x2, x3, x4 is 0, 4, and 6. Plug in the value, add them up, it's 22 and uh, it's strictly bigger than 20, so it does not satisfy. So this means a uh, new computation is needed. Okay, so we will add the constraint, the new constraint C here, into the LP problem. And uh, we will add a new slack variable, x7 here, and change it into equal sign, change the less than one into equal. Okay, so this is the standard form and uh, we'll add that in. Now we have the following problem and uh, we have three constraints, one and two are unchanged. The third one, C prime, is the new one that we added and with the um, X7 here. Okay, and that's the um, objective function. And we see that um, um, it kind of uh, almost in the canonical form, but not really because, okay, this x7 is okay, but this x2 could be a basic variable if I only had the first two um, as the constraint. But when the third one comes in, it contains the x2 term. So we need to remove that. And so is x4, which could be the basic variable, but now I have this one, so I need to also get rid of that. 
Okay, so, okay, so, and after that discussion, we see that we would like to keep x4, x2, and x7 as basic variables. And we need to put the constraints in canonical form. So the last one needs some manipulation. So what we could do would be we could take multiply the second one by negative one and add it on C prime. And then um, the first multiply by negative three and then add it on C prime. Then these two terms will be gone. Okay. And if you carry out that computation, you get this constraint here. It will look like this. Okay, so let's put that in. Okay, so now we um, have this system here. So we write this one in as the final computation result here. And now we see that this is in the canonical form in the quotation sign. That is, the left-hand side is in canonical form with basic variable x4, x2, x7. But then now the right-hand side, um, the b vector here, contains some elements that's negative. Okay? And the objective function is the same. Okay, so um, this reminds us of what we just covered in the previous subchapter. We see that we can solve this by using the dual simplex algorithm. Okay, so let's do this. We can um, go to LP Assistant and I'm showing you here the tab you generated there. So um, the first part is the original tableau, the setting of the problem. Then I see that I will pick row number three because this is negative. And among them, I would choose negative two, negative one. And then let's check the ratio. Three over negative two, negative 1.5. One over one, negative one. This one is bigger, so I pivot here. Okay, after pivoting, I get the second part of the tableau. Then I see I still have a negative one, so I pick the second row here. And then I look at it, I have two negative coefficients my candidates, then let's look at the ratio, five over that, that's something that's um, in absolute value less than one, and then here is negative one, okay? And then um, we will pick that one because it's, it's bigger in value, smaller in absolute value. And after pivoting that, I get the third part of the tableau, and I see that the right-hand side now, they're all positive, and uh, that's great. And uh, all these are non-negative. Then I stop. Now I can conclude that the optimal value, Z max, is this number here. Where is it attained? Well, it's attained. Uh, X4 is this value. X3 is this value. X6 is this value. And all the others are zero. So zero, zero. 2 3rd, 23rd, 040. Okay. Okay, so um, hope that's okay. Now let's look at part two. Let's add a different constraint. So here is our new constraint. Okay, so the now we have a bigger than equal sign. And you can easily put in the x star, and you can verify that this does not hold. So new computations are needed. Okay, let's add a slack variable. And since it's a bigger than equal sign, so I must have minus x7 equal 29. That's a slack variable. And then if I wish to use this, as a, a basic variable, then I want it to be a plus sign. And then I just multiply negative one everywhere to get this. And I call this equation B, and I add this to the LP problem. And then I would like to put the um, left-hand side of the problem in canonical form. 
that is i wish to cancel um x2 and x4 in this expression okay and then we can play a similar trick i can take uh, the second constraint multiply by negative one add on top of b and i take the first equation multiply by negative four i add on top of b and then i get this one okay so you can verify my computation by doing out the detail of this computation okay so and then um i know if i add this into the problem i'll have basic variables x4 x2 and x7 which is here and i also observe that now i have a b3 which is negative one so it's less than zero and then we can solve by dual simplex algorithm Okay, so let's do that, and uh, we go to LP Assistant and put in the numbers. This is the initial tableau, as you punch it in, and then pick up the row to pivot. That's row number three, and look at all of them. There's only one negative term, then you pivot there. And then after the computation, you get this tableau. And then I see that I get another negative term. And then I look at all the coefficients, and they nothing is negative. Whoops, what does that mean? Do you remember what we said at the algorithm? What happens when, when this situation occurs? Well, if this happens, then you conclude that there's no feasible solutions. Okay, so the reason, actually, the underlying reason is the following. If this occurs, and if you shall be solving the dual problem, you will have a unbounded. Um, so, and then if a problem is unbounded, the dual has no feasible solution. Okay, so part three of the example. Now we add another different constraint, which is uh, just an equal sign. So we just try all different types. And it's also easy to verify that the original optimal solution does not satisfy this. That's very easy to verify. Okay, and, uh, and now we um, will be a bit like, take advantage of the LP assistant because we noticed that we had to do all these manipulation to put the problem in canonical form before we could apply the dual simplex algorithm. And what we did there is in principle, just some kind of a pivot step. So we will directly use the LP assistant to find the canonical forms through pivot steps. Okay, so here is the tableau. Okay, so this is the initial part. We put it in the initial one. Um, all the data, and then we look at all of them, and then we see that only x2 here is ready to be a basic variable. It's one, and the, the others are zero there, okay? And the others are not ready. So, okay, so let's make a choice. Let's say that I want to have x4 here as a basic variable for the first equation. So I click on that, pivot on it. Once you click on that, and then now x4 is chosen as the basic variable, and all of these are made to be zero. Okay? And then I still need a basic variable for the third one. So um, I can't choose this, can't choose this, they're already taken. I can choose among others. So it's basically um, pick one, it's fine. So let's say I want to use X5. So I click on X5 and then you see X5 is chosen as a basic um, variable. And then I have this tableau and I see that the left hand side is in the canonical form and the whole thing is a canonical quotation form because uh, the right hand side, the B, has a negative entry, the first one. So 
once you reached here, now you can start the dual simplex algorithm. Okay, so I choose the first row, and then I see I have two candidates to pivot to negative terms. Which one? Well, this gives me ratio negative four, ratio negative one, so that's the one. And you click on that, you pivot it, and then you get the, this tableau. And then I see that now these are all positive, and these are all positive, so I stop. Okay, and then we can conclude. We write out the Z max, the optimal value is here, and it's obtained at these three will be x6, x2, x5, these three values. And the other axes are zero, so you write out here x2, x5, x6, and these are zero. Okay, and that's it. How about that? Hmm? I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, now we finished chapter five. Hooray! I hope you enjoyed it. And next time we will start on chapter six. Okay, see you then.